All right, guys, now that you've heard that song that we're going to use as the template for learning how to create a full layout of a song, before we do get started, I just want to let you know that I've got something really exciting coming up that's going to be fantastic for you guys as my fans. I'm here to help you out, and this next thing is going to be something really exciting. I can't say much more, just know that I'm working with some producers in the Netherlands, and um, oh, I can't wait to, to get working on this next project with you guys and just take off from there. But let's jump straight into it. What you first want to do is find yourself a song that you really enjoy, that you really enjoy the structure of, that you find is, is just an overall great piece. I'm using one of my own tracks here that I released recently. Now the first thing that I would recommend to do is to obviously load that audio file into your FL Studio and you can see that I have time markers across the top here. For example, the intro one here, you won't have this bar, it'll basically just be showing you the numbers at the top. If you just go to the top left corner, go time markers and add one, when you do that, it'll give you a little window, and then for an example, I'm just going to put pre-intro here, enter that in, and wherever the green marker is placed on the scale, it'll drop that in. Not to worry if you put it in the wrong place, because you can drag and move them, and if you no longer need it, you can either rename or you can delete these. So what I have done is I have gone to this track here, which is my own, and I basically found each of the parts to the song um, and broken them up into each of the categories. Now, as you can see here, this is basically the intro. So if we play this part here, obviously knowing that it has a little sweep to bring it in, and each of these parts are important, especially for building your overall feel of the entire song. Because there's so much music out there these days, basing it off other works that you can find is an ultimate tool, and referencing your music to professionally produced music is the ultimate tool. So make sure that you take advantage of that, and don't feel bad that you are taking ideas from another person's track. They would be more than happy for you to do that, because then they are helping other producers. So keep that in mind, and absolutely you can use this project for yourselves with all the titles and everything like that. So. I will include an FLP in the description that you can download that will have pre-tagged all of these parts in here and you can go ahead and, and use the track stems to make whatever you like. I'll put some stems in there instead of the mastered version so that you guys can go ahead and remix it. Just make sure you put my name in the title or you link my channel in your description and you are good to go. So breaking this one up here we have the intro which you can see is based off four bars followed by another four bars and then after that I have a little bridge which goes into the verse because I didn't want to drop straight to the verse I wanted to create a little bit of space and tension that's just eight bars and then it goes straight into the start of the verse I try not to think about you I try to let the thoughts fall away I try not to compare to you but I do it anyway so that is the first verse eight bars long and then bam straight into the pre-chorus which is also another eight bars you love, you touch, you look, I want So then we're coming straight to the chorus or drop, whatever you prefer to call it. And what I've done with my fix here is, is obviously each of the tracks that you're looking at is to pay attention to the elements that are subtracting or the elements that are increasing as the drop comes in. So you can tell that in this last half of this pre-chorus here, very focus on an upsweep effects and also taking away some of the lows and adding some delay as it builds up. This is all done with an automation and you guys can do the same also. So if you listen carefully, you can notice there is more delay, more effects, and there's also an upsweep, and there's also a hard pass filter to cut out some of the lows, so that when the drop hits, bam, it kicks right in your face, and it accentuates that drop. So we'll listen carefully here. Now 
Now that's pretty straightforward. So as you can tell that without those little ele elements of subtraction slash addition of the effects and the high pass filter, the drop would be increasingly less powerful and less prominent. But you can see that the volume also comes down ever so slightly and then bam, that drop hits right in your face and then you get a really full drop coming in. So half of the importance of your buildup is to create a surge or a feel of like a pressure before the drop comes in and then bam, it releases. So make sure you focus on the track that you have put in here yourself, what elements they are using and try to translate that into your own track. So that's very important. Learning of professionals is the best way to do this. As you can see here, I've labeled just coming to the second chorus part, which just has a crash and continues the same structure. Again, another important element to note is that I have added a short sweep in here and a few effects just to re-accentuate the continuation of the chorus. So there's a sweep and there's a slight cutoff and a little bit of delay work in here. Again, all done with automations. So. We're going on to the second chorus part and the third chorus part, which essentially would be the more or less outro of the chorus, but it is still quite full and I've thrown the lyrics over that. So what I recommend to do with each part of the song is to really think, okay, now that I've broken it up into these pieces, what is actually happening differently to other parts within those segments? Or what should I try within my own track that is similar to this that I can create myself? So for example, in this particular part, it is the third part of the chorus, but in the background, you can hear the guitar cutoff coming down so that it filters back into the verse and it takes the pressure off gradually. So we'll listen a little bit carefully here to just the guitar part. So there is a sweep and a transition that goes nicely into the verse and it all rolls nice and smoothly as well as a vocal build, like a little reverse vocal to re-accentuate the verse vocal coming back in. Like Which you can hear like a sort of, like a breath coming through. And that just brings back in that vocal. So these are the little parts that you have to pay attention to when you are doing this as part of your production um, improvements is to listen to the little parts of the detail that the producers do go through because in the end the little parts make a big difference. Attention to detail is super important. So as we're continuing, it's just the verse. Now, right before we go into this drop part here, you can hear that this has additional snares sneaking in on this drop. So again, what we want to do that if we do have similarities in parts of the song, i.e. this pre-chorus and also the previous pre-chorus, we want to add something or change something to make it a little bit different than before so we're not continuously repeating stuff too much. So for example, this verse, yes, the instrument elements are the same, but the lyrics are different. In the pre-chorus, I have got an extra vocal harmony layer. But the other elements are pretty much the same with an added snare to give it a little bit more pressure for the second drop again. Now this next part is very important and especially a more recent thing. The person who more or less did it first that I could notice as a majority was Chami um, when Future House music was becoming increasingly popular. He would often have a one bar break before the continuation of the chorus 
it's not throwing it out of time. It's sort of like a subtraction method um, to to throw you off the regularity of the drop. So usually the chorus would just continue as it would here, like it would build in from this part. But what I've done is I've created what is called syncopation, and that's as if giving you the illusion that it was one bar later or four, bar, uh, four bars later on the drop, and it throws you off a little bit and it adds a nice different emphasis. So if you're in headphones, you'll hear the panning work done here. But just listen carefully. So this part right here is just fully open and I've got a, a string with a down pitch and then I've just hard pan left and right on the opposite notes. And then right when that second bar comes in off the chorus, I have my receiving elements like crashes and then kicks, claps, hats, guitars, bass, everything comes in back at once. And it's just this one bar throw off that gives you a little bit of irregularity, but it makes it unique. And that's something that I really think that some producers should look into because it's a fantastic technique. And especially with genres like Tech House, for an example, um, that's becoming quite popular too. Um, if you want to have a look at an example for that, have a look at Truth Is by Tom Budin um, that has a beautiful example of this technique where the bass line is hitting and then there's almost a pause for a few bars and the way that he's produced it and then bam the kicks and claps um, are exploding out of that and it creates a different kind of feel and tension so I would really recommend having a look at that and especially checking out that song Truth Is by Tom Budin. So the track continues there um, coming into chorus part two similar vibe The only difference here is that the vocals come back on part two straight away. Now, the thing that I did differently in this song here, again, this is where you need to pay attention to detail with the songs that you would like to produce similar to. Um, I have gone with the different type of outro. Usually an outro would start here, and I'd have an eight bars of kicks and claps, similar to the intro in a lot of elements. What I've done here is created sort of a, a downward triangle, downward tree of elements subtracting as we go to the ending effects to just phase out. So if we listen carefully to what gets taken away, for example, low pass filters, the removal of kicks, but the continuation of the side chain um, gives you an idea here. So I'll play this for you. Okay, so you can see in these last four bars, we've got a low pass filter on pretty much everything besides a reverse crash toward the end here, and also the vocal. So what that does is it pulls the focus away from the instruments into the vocal, and then I've added some reverb effects on the vocal and a reverse crash to create a transition and a nice fade out. and then that completes the song. So these little parts sort of detail that you might not initially recognize as being obvious at first will be more obvious when you break up the song like this. When you look at edit in sections, it's incredibly important. So if I can use another example here, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and create a new empty project. Uh, I'll save my changes on that. Let's see what I have. Um, I'll use one of my unreleased songs for now. So, same idea that we would do with this one. As you can see, this is the full layout of the song here. Um, I like to expand these elements so I can see a little bit more of the transients, which is nice. Uh, and the same process would apply. So we obviously know that the kick comes in here, so we go to this top corner, time markers, add one, and then we'll just start with the intro. Put that in. 
And as we can see by our time scale, we've got four bars to here, eight bars to here. So I'm assuming a new element will start on number nine. So then some shakers are introduced. So add a marker, intro part two, put that in. And we notice, okay, cool. So this one starts with kicks, claps, and some sort of effect type uh, synth in the background. And cool, we know, okay, cool. They're introducing a new element. Maybe I should try that with my track. And then coming off the end of it. Cool, so we know in this section, the intro is ending. Um, and because we know that that is a solid eight bars, that lines up perfectly. But we can tell that as we've built into the start of the verse here, which we will label verse, enter that one in, that we've got a side chain that slowly decreases so there's an automation on the side chain to go from 100% all the way down to zero. Listening carefully to what elements are being introduced as we go along or what automations you think you can hear in the background. Cool, so we've got an introduction of, we can either do verse part two, but I'm actually going to start with pre-chorus, oh, chorus as a starter here. So we've got hats and the introduction of a snare as well, or the increase in volume of a snare here. Okay, so we can hear a riser coming up. So you can either put notes um, saying, you know, pre-chorus, add riser, or with your track below, add a riser in or something that you want to put in and see what else is happening. So this is just a continuation. So I'm just going to go pre chorus continued or you can just put build whatever you prefer and obviously there are continuations of automation clips going on with this one um, so we'll keep going here So now we have another element. So we can add a marker here, and then we just can go pre-drop, and then maybe a dash, and then just say um, four bar fill. Any information you can add is gonna help with your creativity. So we have got that. We've got a nice fill in here. And this part leads directly back into the syncopation part I was talking about earlier. So you have a huge build up, and then as the drop comes in, created a completely different mood to if I just slap the drop straight in there. It's like, hold on, something's coming, bam, the kicks and the bass come in, and it gives a completely different feel to the drop. So, you can add another marker here and just go syncopation, drop it in, and then we can drag that to its allocated time slot. And then we know here, okay, cool, kick plus bass. Um, what other elements have we got coming in here? Let's have a listen. So just kick and bass gets added in there. So this is another important part. So here we've actually got a clap on our fourth beat of this bar and a double up kick. And then bam, in goes with some hi-hats and a continuation of the clap as well. And then you can also hear in the background there is some sort of effect sound in the background. Now basically you just continue this process through the whole song with all of the little bits that you're adding in. So then when you come to the creation process you're like, oh I have no idea what to do next. You think, well hang on. In this song, there's a pre-drop four bar fill. There's uh, some sort of syncopation before, maybe I'll have a bit of a play with that, and then I have the kick and the bass come in. 
let's try it, see what works. Trial and error is a huge part of producing music, so just try stuff, and you'll be surprised that even when you make mistakes, you can create some pretty cool things. Um, for example, I didn't intend on doing syncopation here when I was making this song, but I accidentally forgot to paste in one of my kicks patterns. So when I heard it, I said, oh, shit, that's actually really cool. Um, took out the bass, took out all the other elements, and just left it open, and then slapped the kick in the bass in there, and I really liked it. So continue doing this with any of the songs that you want to, and then build off of that. That's really important. So that's my advice to you guys. Um, download in the description has got the stems for the previous track called I Try, and of course you can stream that on Spotify or any of the major platforms. And um, if you do want to release a, a bootleg or a remix of that, um, go ahead and do that. But um, make sure it's only free for use, can't be released with any labels or anything like that. Um, probably on YouTube is best, and then send me a link so that I can have a listen to it and um, see how it sounds. So yeah, thank you guys for listening. I hope you have learned something a little bit about today, and you can put that in practice. Until next time, thank you guys. Drop, drop, drop. Drop, 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 I don't wanna make it stop I just wanna hit the drop